Hey everyone, my name is Ritwik Gupta. Uh, glad to be here today. I wanted to talk to you guys about uh, uh, how we use uh, remote sense imagery and machine learning to do building game assessment, which is a, a really big task that takes up a lot of resources around the world, especially as disasters increase uh, year over year. So um, thanks for having me. I'm excited to talk. So before I get started, I uh, just wanted to briefly give an overview of what CMU's SEI and the Defense Innovation Unit are. Uh, so CMU's SEI is a federally funded research and development center. So if you've heard of NASA JPL or Oak Ridge, et cetera, uh, CMU hosts another FFRDC, very similar to them. Um, uh, it's operated by CME on behalf of the Department of Defense and our focus is on software engineering, architecture, AI engineering, et cetera. Uh, and basically our goal is to transition academic research to prototypes. So we work with uh, uh, faculty and at CMU and at Stanford and, and uh, many other universities. And the goal is to make sure that we're making sure um, relevant research is transitioned over to um, uh, uh, government uh, in the best way possible. Similarly, the Defense Innovation Unit uh, is a Department of Defense Research Engineering Organization, uh, and, the, and the goal is to spark innovation and bring new technologies over to the DOD. Um, and the goal is on five different portfolios, focused on AML, human systems, space, cyber, and autonomy. Um, and together, we work together to launch this project on, uh, for humanitarian assistance and disaster response. That's one of the pressing needs that uh, the Department of Defense really focuses on. So uh, uh, one of the biggest challenges that faces society today is, is, is proper disaster management, disaster response. Um, uh, as, as you guys know, um, once a disaster happens, a lot of things have to go into place. Uh, people have to go in and assess which buildings were damaged, how many buildings were damaged, uh, what, what, to what degree were they damaged. Um, uh, they have to have accurate counts uh, because in order for a presidential, uh, or in order for a state of emergency to be uh, declared, um, uh, no one's going to let you do that unless you have proper accounts, and that's a very, very manual task. Uh, pretty soon after disaster, within 24 to 48 hours, you have to have an exact number, like 7,300 buildings were damaged, um, and you have to send people uh, in person uh, with minimal gear sometimes uh, to basically go and count buildings, and there may be down power lines, there may be, there may be animals in the street, there may be looters, there's a lot of risk to those people as you're assessing the buildings um, in person. So in the US, uh, these are some of the analysis agencies that do this task currently. Uh, Cal Fire, the California Air National Guard, FEMA. Um, and, and a cool thing that these guys are doing that's very different from other people is that they're actually starting to use drones and other forms of aerial surveillance uh, to do this task in a more high throughput fashion. Um, however, the way they're doing this is still very uh, low tech to an extent. Um, they're basically, for example, for fires, taking a drone, flying it over uh, the air, um, and counting, uh, basically, in infrared, is this, is, this ba is this building base glowing, or is it not? If it's glowing, that means the building is destroyed. If it's not glowing, that means the building is not destroyed. Um, there's a couple issues here. That's still a very manual task. Um, you know, it still requires an analyst sitting at a screen, screening an area at a time. Um, and also, it's just not very, it's not very granular. You just get two degrees, right? You get destroyed or not destroyed. There's no sense of, of minutia there, which may help people understand uh, the difference in, in, in th that this neighborhood may be way more damaged than this neighborhood, but there's just no sense of appreciation there for, uh, there, there may be degrees of difference there. So we thought, uh, how, can we, how can we make this task easier? How do we, how do we create something that allows these uh, analysis agencies to do a better, faster job of damage assessment, um, especially, in especially when there's a large area to be covered, uh, like some of the wildfires in California. Uh, so we created a prize challenge called XView2 uh, that collected over 850,000 uh, uh, damage annotations for buildings across 45,000 square kilometers of imagery um, across a large area. But before I get into that, um, I wanted to give a quick shout out to our partners and collaborators. Um, we work, the, these are less than half of them. We work with over 40 people, 40 agencies around the world to make this happen. Um, uh, specifically, we wanted to call out uh, the National Geospatial Intelligence Agency, Cal Air National Guard, and the, and the Joint AI Center. Um, without them, the, this, this would have been impossible. So really wanted to, to, to thank our partners uh, for all the work that they've done with us. 
So as I mentioned, uh, we wanted to collect uh, disaster imagery over a large area. Um, so uh, one of the biggest things for any machine learning model is if I want to be able to assess damage, I can't just assess damage over wildfires in California. I want to be also able to assess uh, volcanic eruptions in, in, in Hawaii. We want to be able to assess um, wild, uh, uh, wind damage from hurricanes. We want to be able to assess floods in, in Kerala, et cetera. Um, and so uh, it was of utmost important to us that we have a wide diversity of data um, within our data set, uh, uh, both in terms of types of damage as well as loca locations. Um, it helps no one if, if, the, if the model only works for a very constrained area um, uh, in one part of the US. Uh, we want this to be generalizable. Um, so as I mentioned, over 45,000 square kilometers of imagery, over 850,000 building annotations um, across, across this entire world. One of the hardest parts of doing this annotation and, and, and collecting the data, however, was trying to understand how do you actually label this data? So as it turns out, um, FEMA uses something called the HAZIS manual to, uh, to annotate uh, hurricane and wind damage for commercial and residential buildings in certain parts of the US. However, CAL FIRE has a completely different scale that they use to assess wildfire damage and earthquake damage um, in California only for residential buildings. Uh, and those two, those scales are only meant to be used for in-person assessment and really don't translate over well to remote sense imagery. So one of the largest tasks that we had to solve was how do we actually assess damage from remote sense imagery for any type of disaster, for any part of the world, for any type of building? Um, so we sat down with, with imagery analysts uh, from, again, 20 or 30 of those partner agencies um, a giant Zoom call, much like this one, and basically hammered out, what does it mean for a building to be damaged? Um, how many scales of damage are actually useful? Do we have to assess five different types of damage? Um, do we have to assess well, two different types of damage? Um, and we ended up coming up with some, something called the joint damage scale, uh, which basically goes from a scale of zero to three. Um, to, and it's, it's qualitative. We, and, and, and this is only meant for remote sense imagery, right? So top-down imagery. And so uh, it should work for uh, many different types of disasters. Um, it should work for um, uh, different types of damage across different parts of the world. Um, and a lot of disaster agencies like uh, um, uh, CAL FIRE, uh, as well as, as, as FEMA, have, have picked up the scale and started using it for their day-to-day uh, -day disaster operations. So, uh, so I think the biggest academic uh, 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 contribution that we had was specifically uh, this joint damage scale. So here's a view of the data. Uh, we partnered with Crowd AI to get all the data annotated. Um, the data set uh, comes in pairs. So we have a pre-event and post-event imagery pair. Um, basically, same area, orthorectified, um, um, you know, uh, and, and there's a difference in time. So one image is taken before the disaster happened, one image is taken after the disaster occurred, and then we have annotations. So on the right, what you see is, for example, uh, this is a fire. Uh, all the buildings in red were completely destroyed. So on that joint damage scale, they're rated as a three. Uh, and then you can see one building in the bottom left there, which is a blue, because as you can see in the post event, uh, that building was completely undamaged. So that, that is a completely no damage building, um, somehow luckily made it out alive. And we have over uh, 850,000 annotations just like this within the SV2 data set. Here's another example. Uh, this is a tsunami. So you can see pre-event and post-event. You can see some land has been washed away. You can see buildings have been destroyed. Uh, you can see some annotations. And then one thing that we also contributed uh, to, to, this, to this challenge was uh, we created baseline models that were, that were able to then create inferences um, over, over this data set. Um, let me see. Uh, crap, sorry. Uh. Hi, everyone. Oh, uh, sorry for interrupting because uh, uh, we only have 10 minutes for each talk. Uh, okay. so I think this is wonderful. I, uh, like, I, I don't know if others have questions or if you have anything that you want to conclude. Yeah, let, let, me, let, me, let me just show. Uh, these were some results from the actual challenge. So these are models that competitors were able to contribute to the challenge, um, able to assess damage. or So again, floods, wildfires, uh, 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 volcanic eruptions. These are actual predictions from actual models that were done in about uh, 13 milliseconds uh, on a CPU. Um, we we're able to use these models for the Australian uh, wildfires that just happened. So there was a, a great use for them. Um, and finally, I want to invite people. Uh, so if you want to read the paper, uh, just search XVD on archive and it should come up uh, with more details. 
Uh, and the full data set is available for download at xp2.org. Uh, and sorry cool. for going over time. Yeah, thanks a lot.